Welcome everyone to Mamados Medical Media, a free online YouTube channel, weekly posting new medical videos. Join our Facebook and Telegram groups for more interaction and latest news. You could also support the channel on Patreon, where we upload multiple choice questions and other premium content. Thanks in advance. Hi again and welcome. This is the second part in the series about the physiology of pain. Make sure you check out the first part before watching this video and I will provide you with its links in the description section below. This video is about types of pain. There are three types of pain and we will start with the cutaneous pain. So cutaneous pain from its name, it's the pain of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. This type contains both qualities of pain. First, pricking fast pain and second, delayed dull pain type of pain. Dermatom is an area of skin supplied mainly by one spinal nerve. And now let's look at the body dermatomes starting with the face. Three branches of the trigeminal nerve supplies the face with little area in front of the ear supplied by the facial nerve. V1 is the ophthalmic branch in yellow. V2 is the maxillary branch in red. V3 is the mandibular branch in green color. The back of the head is supplied by the cervical nerves from C2 to C4. Now when we look at the anterior view of the body, the neck, upper chest, shoulders, arms and hands are supplied by the cervical nerves from C2 to C8. The chest and the abdominal area is supplied by the thoracic spinal nerves from T1 to T12. T1 also supplies part of the inner arm. T8 is at the level of the xiphoid process. T10 is at the level of the umbilicus. And T12 is at the level of the symphysis pubis. The groin, anterior thigh and most of the foot are supplied by the lumbar nerves from L1 to L5. S1 is supplying the lateral aspect of the foot and the little toe, while the other sacral nerves supply the genitosacral area. In a posterior view, the back of the head and neck and the upper limbs are supplied by the cervical nerves, two-thirds of the back by the thoracic nerves, the pelvic area and most lateral and medial areas in the thigh and legs are supplied by the lumbar nerves, while the back of the thigh is supplied by the sacral nerves S1 and S2. The gluteal area and the perineum are supplied by the sacral nerves. And last but not least, the foot are supplied by the fourth and fifth lumbar nerves. Second is the deep or somatic pain. It's the pain of the muscles, joints, ligaments and bone periosteum. It's a dull, not well localized, diffused, intense and prolonged type of pain. Transmitted by type C afferents of slow pain using substance P as neurotransmitters in the spinal cord. Usually it's associated with reflex contraction of nearby muscles, autonomic reaction like sweating, palpitations, and so on. Their afferents are transmitted through the pathway of the motor fibers, but then they separate, having their nuclei on the dorsal root ganglia before synapsing in the substantia gelatinosa. Pro muscle exercise or a state of low blood flow or both of these factors produces a state of an anaerobic metabolism due to the lack of oxygen causing the production of lactic acid and substance P which in the end will produce pain sensation. Claudication is a muscle pain due to a clogged blood supply to the muscle that increases in intensity with mild to moderate exercise like for example walking for a short distance. Bed rest and re-establishing blood supply is the key for treating such cases. Angina pectoris is a severe chest pain due to a clog in the coronary artery of the heart.
which also increases in intensity with higher cardiac activity. Third and last type is the visceral pain. It's the pain of the internal body organs. When scientists studied the viscera, they found moderate number of pain receptors, few touch and temperature receptors, and no receptors for proprioception. Visceral pain could be triggered by spasm of a viscous like the intestines, biliary system, and labor pain, producing a colicky type of pain. Distension of a hollow viscera, like feeling of a full bladder or overfilled stomach. Ischemia or a low blood supply, causing tissue injury, producing a massive pain signals, causing severe type of dull pain. Chemicals like leaking hydrochloric acid in perforating peptic ulcer disease produces one of the most severe pain ever known to mankind. Visceral pain afferents are called general visceral afferents. They are not regarded as sympathetic nor parasympathetic fibers. Yet these afferents pass by the autonomic ganglia from T1 to L3 with the sympathetic ganglia while the 10th, 9th, 7th, 3rd cranial nerves ganglia and added to them the 2nd to 4th sacral autonomic nerves. Then the general visceral afferents separates from the pathway of the autonomic fibers, having their nuclei on the dorsal root ganglia before synapsing with the second order neuron in the spinal cord. And now let's look at some visceral nerve supply. The visceral pleura is insensitive to pain, while the parietal pleura is supplied by somatic nerves, explaining why it produces fast pain. C3 to C5 supplying the diaphragm intra-abdominal viscera is supplied by both sympathetic splanchanic nerves from t1 to l1 and the vagus nerve which carries parasympathetic impulses t10 to l1 supplying the kidney ureters t12 to l1 having somatic innervation producing a sharp fast pain in the parietal peritoneum t11 to l1 also supplies the fundus of the uterus in female. Now let's look at some afferents going with the parasympathetic nerves. The tongue upper esophagus and bronchi are supplied by the vagus, glossopharyngeal nerves and the facial nerve for part of the tongue. Fibers of sacral nerves S2 to S4 supply the sigmoid colon, the rectum, the trigone of the urinary bladder, the prostate in male, and the cervix in female. And last but not least in this video, we'll look quickly into uh, the characteristics of visceral pain. Visceral pain is poorly localized. It usually radiates or referred to other sites. It usually involves autonomic reaction. It could be associated with muscle guarding around the diseased viscous and it could be associated with hyperalgesia and we will leave it here till our next part so thanks for watching and we meet in our next video